walk my top. Hi guys, we are giving you a chance to get back on live. So I'm gonna give it a few minutes for all of our Team Unbreakable, Truth and Love Ministry International Partners to come back on while my wife gets uh, a few notes together as well. So we want to apologize. Connection's weaker. Just praying. Yep. All right, guys. This is definitely a challenge today. But we are going to do our best to bring this word to you no matter what. So I believe we are uh, in Sonoma County somewhere. In an undisclosed location. Trying to bring this message to you. <laughs> Here we go. Let's wait for my wife to come over as well. Um, I know. Connection, connection, connection. I got you right here. Okay. Looks like it's stronger over here, right? No, it says it's still weak. Okay. Your phone? Yeah, get it. Your phone? Grab it. Oh, here, I got it, here. You got that first thing? Yep. Get all of our... Boy, we lost all of our viewers. I hope we get, them, get you guys back on here again. We're so sorry about that. That's crazy. Hang in there, everybody. Hang in there. Let me go on my phone and see if this is connected. Okay. Hold on. Got some cool music in the background. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Still live? I don't know. I'm trying to see, so. Hold on. There you go. It's your face. <laughs> I'm so upset. I'm all up. We're irritated. We are very irritated. We are extremely irritated. Okay. You have to turn your volume down now. Okay. <laughs> I need to see your phone now. Okay. There you go. It's live. Here we go. Go ahead, babe. All right. All right, guys. Round two. Part of this prophetic word. It's definitely a fight. It's definitely a spiritual fight today. But uh, I'll tell you what. We will bring this word to you. Right? Yeah. Let's pray. In Jesus' name. Isha. Father, we call for a strong connection in the name of Jesus. Yes, Father. All interferences. Yes, Father. We tear down every interference in the name of Jesus right now. Hinder us not, for the Lord has prospered our way. Command all the surrounding noises and distractions to be reduced now in Jesus' mighty name. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what's about to go forth. I thank you for my wife. And thank you for the dreams that you've given us both. And Father, I pray that it comes out clearly. I pray that we are able to articulate everything that you want us to say. And it will glorify you. And it will give, yes. give the people a better understanding of what's going on right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, last night, uh, my husband and I both had prophetic dreams. And uh, so, Brian had his first. And then after we discussed it and, and prayed and went back to sleep then I had mine and we all know that the um, debate is on today and uh, this is super serious <laughs> okay so I think Pastor Brian wanted to share what yours was what your dream was alright guys it was uh, 
there were two parts to my dream, but I'm just going to give you the, the, the one that I believe that's, um, well, there's, Jesus, give me a clear, clear mind. To, okay, so it was about, it's about leaders. You had a dream about a leader. Yes, definitely. Yes. Um, so here's, here's what happened. Um, I was placed in front of this motorcade. This very uh, powerful presidential leader got out of the car. Lights, cameras, action, everything was going on. Everything's moving. And um, I was able to come up to this leader. And first of all, my wife was next to me. I took her ring. I had her ring, and I placed it on her finger. I gave her her ring. I had another ring, which was a man's ring. I went up to this presidential leader. I placed the ring on his finger. And then after that, he proceeded to open up a billfold. He handed me uh, some money, and he handed me keys to his vehicle, and he said, wait for me around the corner. I'll be back in a few minutes. So what? Um, there was also other people around him that I could tell he was, he was being very, uh, he trusted me, but it, there was a few people around him they didn't trust. And I knew this based on the way he was acting and, and how he spoke to me. Um, then... The church leader, I thought, was the church leader. The second part yeah. of this dream was a church leader, a very well-known church leader. I'm not going to say the name. Um, and he has, he has a, a child. And for some reason, the, uh, the numbers didn't add up to when this child was born and how long he was married for. So there was some type of secret going on in, in, in that family. So I went to the, the child, which was a young man, and I spoke to him. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we were talking about, oh, that's awesome. Cool background scenery. So I went to, the t to this child and began to speak to him and be able to share some things with him. And I said to him, uh, you know, is this your father? And he said, well, that's the family secret that nobody's supposed to know about. And I could tell his eyes were starting to tear up. He started, his eyes started to water. I said, well, you know, me and you have similar stories. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll get back to you. I will come back for you. And then uh, that was that one. Yeah. So. Okay. And uh, we're going to interpret what all of this means. Those of you who've been following our ministry knows know that we've been preaching from the White House to the courthouse to the church house. And the Lord has revealed to us that there's going to be a changing of the guards all the way down all of these houses and then eventually down to our own personal homes. So if we don't think what's going on in the White House is going to affect our personal homes, we're greatly deceived. So in my dream, I was at the polling, I was at, a, at the polls and at a, some kind of polling location, I was getting ready to vote and I had the cards I was getting ready to fill out and my husband and I were sitting in um, a specific area. I said, you know, we need to come up here to fill these out. And then um, I was unable, uh, I had to fill some more things out and you couldn't be there. You had to, cause it, like it was private where you couldn't see what the person was doing when they were voting. So. Brian got a little irritated with me in the dream and he and he went to the back and then um, as I was getting ready to fill out this card I realized before I could actually cast my vote um, that I had to um, watch this movie and this movie was like all these different animals like squirrels and skunks and just different things like that and I knew I knew in the dream I had to wait until the unveiling till the end of the, the clip because I knew some of those animals, you were going to know exactly, like they were going to do something kind of crazy and then we're going to go, oh, that's, that's what's going on, right? So I saw that going on and I, wa I watched the, the whole thing. Then all of a sudden there was this man next to me and he took, um, he he was really irritated with me and he took a pen and he stabbed me with the pen right in my arm and I screamed out and as he was attacking me and my husband was sitting there and he didn't get up he didn't do anything and um, then I um, the people at the polling office ran over to see what was going on and so I had to roll up my sleeve so they could you know to show them my injury and as I rolled my sleeve up, I had this tattoo that out of nowhere. And the tattoo, um, what did that tattoo say? <laughs> it was, uh, it was tax. Yeah, the ta it said the tax deficit is, 
and it had a number and I saw the number and it said the tax deficit and I looked at my arm I'm like oh my gosh I don't even know how I got this tattoo I don't know where it came from and so this man was you know it looked like something was was totally wrong and like I I had done something that like like I shouldn't have done because I actually did have the tattoo but I have no idea how it got on there and so the people were looking at me and they're like, you know, well, you know, something's on your arm, you know, something's obviously wrong. And then, um, in, then in the dream, um, in the dream, what they did was they peeled back the first layer of the tattoo. So there was like an, a, a top little skin layer and they pulled it up so they can see what the, the real, what the whole tattoo said. And, um, then what I began to see was um, in this dream, what the Lord began to show me is in Pastor Brian's dream, we're going to give you the interpretation of that. We're seeing an unveiling of sin and things in leaders pass coming out in the White House. But as believers, we can't be ignorant to think it's not also going to be happening in the church house at the same time, at the same time, because God is cleaning house and he's and, and um, the uh, changing of the guards is taking place and people are being uh, replaced. And I'm also going to give you scripture on that. So in this dream for Pastor Brian, this well-known preacher was very loved and liked and um, not a deceptive, not what we preach on the milkman and the candy man, anybody who've watched our, our teachings, but we knew that he was really loved. Yeah. And so we felt sad for him because this secret had been so uh, in, embedded in their past and they were so public that they just kept it secret and not told anybody. So the Lord began to reveal to us, and, and it's been happening with, in my ministry for years, but now we're seeing an acceleration of it where the Lord is giving us dreams and visions of people and it, on platforms and in ministry and across the board and sheep and church all, all around, starting from the leadership all the way around and showing us things so that they can get their healing. Now, most people are tolerating and keeping sin and keeping people's um, weaknesses under wraps because they think it's love to do that and they want to be gentle and merciful and they don't want to hurt them. Ugh. But this is just not working where we're at, you guys. Yeah. So hold on. Yeah. Okay. So we just got a lot. Yeah, of, I mean, uh, it is just been a lot of background noise, yeah, like a lot of distraction. Of it's all the people out. It's okay. Yeah. We're, we're just, just share it. Excuse me. Oh. We're filming. Yeah. We're, oh, we're just trying to do something live here. I didn't want you to be on camera and not know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, that's okay. So yeah, it's been a challenge, definitely. But very much so. We're definitely, we definitely feel like we have to get this word okay. to you guys. So we've been seeing what the Lord's been showing us is different things going on in leaders so that they can get their healing. God knows many leaders and people uh, all, all across the board have been keeping secrets and living with things. So we know what is happening with Trump right now is the same thing that happened to King David. You know, he knows what he did was wrong in his past. But, you know, sometimes our past, not sometimes our past in Mark 4, 22 will catch up with us and things will be disclosed. And the reason why there's a spirit of disclosure happening is so that we can get our healing. God's people can get their deliverance. So the believers out there um, casting all kinds of judgment, be very careful to do that because your past will come up as well at some point at some yeah. opportune time. Yeah. And if the same mercy yep. that we extend to our leaders and our, our family and our friends, the same mercy will be the same mercy that'll be extended to us when we're in need of it. Now, please don't um, confuse mercy with tolerance. We are not supposed to tolerate anything that's not biblical or any sin, witchcraft, manipulation, all those kinds of things, Jezebel spirits control from the White House, from the platform on, in the church house, all the way down. We're not supposed to put up with that. And so there's a there's a reason why. Keep going. Okay. There's a, there's a reason why you are seeing this kind of exposure because to the degree that he is going to be elevated or any of you are going to be elevated, the Lord wants the vessel to be pure and for the enemy to have nothing on you. 
And so that's what Jesus said to Satan. He said, you have nothing in me. You tempt me, do whatever you want. You have nothing in me. So it is the purifying process that we're seeing go forth um, with President Trump right now, okay? So in my dream, literally, I'm gonna tell you, um, in my dream, it was very specific because not only was I being stabbed by this person, but I identify who this person is. Um, it's symbolic of people, but in my dream, it was, it's actually somebody that is attacking our ministry. And this is a Christian. This is somebody that calls himself a Christian and um, a leader and was a leader in a church. He's being deceived right now. Is being completely deceived and literally is um, threatening FBI investigation, which is kind of funny. Kind of makes me feel special that he would, that he would even... Um, threatened that he's getting the FBI, which is the Federal Just Bureau of Investigation. But that's taxes. what the enemy does. He tries to scare people, right? But he's weak. And, but, well, yeah, because he's taken over by Satan. And so this is why what we are preaching to believers is so vital that we are called as frontline ministers to, to get this word out to people. Because if you don't expose um, the sin in the body of Christ immediately or in the White House, then it's gonna come back to bite you in the booty later or those people will come back to use something against you. And it's happening all it's happening all over the place, you guys. So nothing can be used against us, what this guy's actually doing. But um, I found it interesting that it was a pen that he stabbed me with, because what was that saying? The pen is mightier than the sword. Yes, and so we were even talking about how Abraham Lincoln, um, in the Civil War, when you read his, um, that, that you know the eight letters that he he supposedly would write out to different people and you know different um uh leaders, leaders and warriors in the army and he would get his anger out and write it out and then he would take a step back and decide well okay this is their perspective if they were in the middle of a bloodbath or this is their perspective if they were actually the ones you know so what happens is the lord is cautioning us all of us as as believers to be very careful how quick we come out with our sword and we need to be extremely merciful and loving and God will vindicate he, he will absolutely vindicate anybody persecuting you or trying to take you down right so what we need to understand in the prophetic dreams that my husband and I had number one key in his the ring he put the ring on my finger solidifying that we are one we are one flesh and let no man or demon separate or tear apart what the Lord has put together. Now, we're not, our marriage isn't under attack or anything like that, but we do talk to a lot of leaders that they um, have a lot of, you know, uh, scuffles and, and um, conflicts with their spouse. The high, I call it different levels, different devils. And if both spouses are not aware of what warfare looks like and how it's coming in to fight you, then the enemy will come in and separate you. So number one, we are praying for President Trump and his wife as this information has been disclosed that um, obviously we're not talking, you know, uh, Tammy Wynette stand by your man or Clinton standing by her husband as he's having affairs in the White House. Um, but what I am saying is this was over 12 years ago um, that this disgusting conversation took place. And I know many men and women that have spoken like this in locker rooms, you know, doesn't make it right at all. But it didn't happen yesterday, folks. It happened 10 years ago. And this man has been going through the fire and purif purification process, just like we all are for our next level. So it's very important to have mercy, not criminal acts. We're not having criminal, uh, we're not having mercy on anything that's taken place criminally, but morally right so we're having um there's obviously the clinton administration there's a lot of criminal acts taking place and that's that's obviously proven so in pastor brian's dream we what we are seeing is to pray for your leaders in your churches and those that you support you know worldwide on television big media ministries please pray for them because what's happening is the attacks on the marriages are so strong and there's a lot of that the enemy corruption and spirits of delusion and lying spirits and coercion and are and strategy of the enemy going out against God's people to try to turn the husbands and wives against each other. But also remember God is raising up frontline ministries like ourselves that are giving us, I'm going to show you in scripture, giving us dreams and vision and prophetic revelation into some of these leaders so that we can pray for them and then we contact them to help them and to help bring um, 
to help bring deliverance and to bring healing into their lives, right? So that's what God's first priority is for mercy and to bring his people to healing. Okay, so if um, Hillary will not rep repent and she keeps making excuses for her emails and um, the, the uh, classified or, emails or go... Or blatantly just doesn't even care. Doesn't, doesn't even... care about killing babies, whatever term. That's blatant sin. But we have seen but, that... But let me just interrupt you for a second. But you see a uh, humbling... You see somebody that's that's asking for forgiveness and and saying I did this wrong. This was, but this is what this is who I am now. This is what's happening to me now. And this, I'm, I'm basically paraphrasing, but the man is getting cleaned up now. He is getting cleaned. He's up. getting cleaned up. It's, king it's David, a purifying process. King David made a lot of mistakes. Yes. Right before yeah. he became king. We all have. Or even when we, even when, during the uh, his kingship. his reign. Yeah. So I mean, and I trust me, I've made a lot of mistakes too, as as, as well. And um, my wife would always tell me. Uh, you know, you can't take this to the next level. And, you know, and I would tell her, you know, this person doesn't respect you, this, but this, and I'd always be about me. And mm -hmm. God had to do a humbling in me. And I, I go back and I think about all the fights that I've ever had and all the times I got very prideful and I almost got hurt. I, it, it seemed like I'd have to get hurt and then humbled and, yes. and sit there and think like, okay, okay well, why, why is this yeah. happening? Before I'd start, Lord, yeah. start speaking to me. So on the prophetic realm, what's happening, what we're, why we're doing this is, I mean, we could tell a lot of stories about ourselves and yeah. that all that's, I mean, and you guys relate to a lot of that. But what I want to explain to you is, is try to keep you in the vein of the prophetic and prophesy to you actually what's happening. See a tattoo on my arm in this dream. You have to understand, I don't have tattoos. I'm not against them, but it's not something I ever wanted or, or nor do I want. So for me in this dream to roll up my sleeve and all of a sudden have this tattoo it just, it's it just shows you how the enemy is actually trying to use something against you and trying to you know in the in the dream he was trying to turn me and brian against each other make it look like i actually i told him i was going to a specific location but all of a sudden i had a tattoo so it's true i have a tattoo so i didn't go to that location obviously but in my dream i had no idea how that tattoo was on my arm but the lord did reveal something to me about uh some strategies of the enemy and and some things that he's you know going to attempt to use against uh president trump but what we need to understand is that is that the when you're a, not a politician, you're a businessman. You're, you're a businessman. You're not a multi-billionaire because you don't know how to operate finances and how to find loopholes in our, in our tax laws. And I'm not talking about doing things illegally. I'm talking about you know how to write things off. You know how to categorize things. You just know how to work the, the P&Ls when you're a multi-billionaire. So, and he admits that, what? I use every law possible that I can when I, every law possible, right? So we have to be careful that we're passing judgment on people when we, you're, you know, when we haven't walked in those shoes and we haven't been there. So in Pastor Brian's dream, we're seeing that um, there are sins that have been kept in the church that have not been dealt with and it's causing people a lot of grief, a lot of heartache, sickness, disease, and even death. People are dying prematurely because they're hiding secrets. So it is to the glory of God to conceal a matter and it's the wisdom of kings to search it out. So that's what we're doing is we're confronting, um, the, we're confronting these things that the Lord is showing us. Um, but what he did give me, um, I want to share because this, this is what we want to pray. We're so sorry. I mean, over three hours ago, we just had hundreds of you log on with us and we're so sorry. We hope, um, I know everybody had to probably get on with their day and weren't able to go on live with us at this time. But I pray that we'll be able to share um, this video and be able to help some people. Yeah. But what I want to say is we are fighting against major demonic spirits, you guys. Christians are absolutely delusional, a spirit of delusion, which means they actually have a mental deficit, a mental disease. If you don't understand what God is doing in the White House, we need to find those that are wise and understand the times, just like, King, uh, just like Daniel was um, with Nebuchadnezzar. We need these, we don't need the prophets, um, excuse me, we don't need the magicians and the psychics. We need the prophets and the seers to go before these kinds of kings and leaders and to be able to see things and mysteries that they cannot see. That's why the prophetic ministry is so very important. But what I felt like we needed to really pray, we see this debate is getting ready to come up. And in my dream, I saw strategies coming out of absolutely left field 
against Trump. Things that it's like, where in the world did you unearth that one from? And they were going to have little bits of truth, but completely twisted diabolique, which is twisted evil. And so we have to be on our guard that the enemy desires to still kill and destroy our destinies. And of course, he does not want any man whose heart is turning towards the things of God to become president of the United States of America. He does want someone that's going to steal, kill, life policies, not follow the law, but follow the Quran and every other um, religion that suits her pocketbook and their foundation. So the only foundation that's going to stand is a foundation of Jesus Christ. All these other foundations are going to fall. So it is so important, believers, You, we have got to be the Daniels of our time. So in Daniel 2, we know Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And so what he was doing was he, he called forth all the magi- magicians and all the psychics because he needed somebody to interpret his dream. Yeah, he needed somebody to interpret this dream, right? We apologize. This is the only place we could find to, to broadcast you guys. So we're just going to do it here, okay? Anyway, so the king ends up calling um, for Daniel. And Daniel at this point is able to interpret the king's dream. And so what happens is this. This is the word that I received in Second Dan- in, in uh, Daniel 2, verse 19. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision, just like both of us had night visions last night. And I love it. As husband and wife, we received this. Thank you, Heather. So in Daniel 2, we're going to be praying 19. We're going to pray 19 through uh, 27 over President Trump, especially before this debate that's going to take place Pacific Standard Time in a couple hours, okay? And what Daniel said was all of these things were revealed to him. And Daniel 2.20 said, Blessed be the name of our God forever and ever. For wisdom and might are his. Listen to this, you guys. He removes kings and he sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals the deep secret things. He knows what's in the darkness. Do you hear me? He knows what's in the darkness. He knows the corruption in the politicians from the White House to the courthouse, even in the church house. He knows the darkness. And the light dwells with him, right? I thank you and I praise you, O God, of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might and has made known to me what we desired of you. For you have made known to us the solution to the king's problem. So listen, Team Unbreakable, we need to be the solution to the politicians' problems. We need to be a solution to what's happening in the White House, to what's happening in the courthouses, and to what's happening in our churches. We have to be the solution. Do you understand that? We have to be the solution. And so, oops, almost knocked it over. Sorry about that. So we need to make sure we're praying that. Now, I had, as a pastor, and I know we're a 501c3 ministry and all of that. I, I get that. But I have never been ashamed to stand up for who I believe God is calling into um, politics. I won't be ashamed because you know what? I don't want to land in the category of Jesus' disciples that after um, after he had been arrested. Oh, weren't you? Wait, didn't I see you with that Jesus of Nazareth? Oh, oh wait, no, didn't I a, see you? That wasn't me. Oh, no, that wasn't me. That was my next door neighbor. Yeah. Oh, no, that wasn't me. I don't want to be that person. I'm not going to be that that wasn't me person. So I want to be the one who clearly says, yes, yes, Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. And I'm clearly stating, yes, yes, Trump in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, Trump. And so we have to remember this is tolerance, right? Yeah. Grace without truth breeds tolerance. So we are not to tolerate ungodly leaders at all. Is the willing to accept something that we don't believe in. So I'm not going to.